Blessed Rosh Hashanah to you. That is the Jewish New Year. In this program, we are continuing our focus on answering that age-old question of why? Why do bad things happen to good people? This, of course, being one of the central themes of the book of Job. Our philosophers have titled such a pursuit as theodicy, which describes the effort to vindicate God. You see, our very concept of justice itself is absolutely dependent on God being a just God. Biblical wisdom teaches us that with the analogy of the anointing flowing down Aaron's beard, that it is impossible for the body to be well when the head is sick. This is kingdom wisdom applicable to any leadership. It is no surprise that we remain in the book of Job and on what many would consider to be the topic of the ages, how can a perfectly good, almighty, and all-knowing God permit evil? It is also right along this vein of inquiry that we intersect the dialogue between God and Satan, who came along with the Ben Elohim, sons of God, to present themselves before God, Elohim, in heaven. But, wait a minute, we know that he was uh, once the anointed cherub, that's Satan, appointed by God to cover and protect. Some scholars speculate that this might have been a sacred uh, relative position with the mercy seat. <laughs> uh, we're not going there this morning. <laughs> we're not going there. Uh, what I am focusing on is the fact that Satan had access to heaven and to God's holy presence. You see, we can have no doubt that this was after, after his fall. Because before the fall, his name was Lucifer. So, so this is after the rebellion and his fall. There are three scenarios that present themselves here. One being is the key to this riddle to be found in our defining the heaven where Satan presented himself. Biblical knowledge reveals to us that there are three heavens. The first one being a natural one where our birds and present day planes fly. And the second one being a little beyond the stars. The sun and the moon uh, are in that heaven. Uh, and also believed to be where, by a type of sublimation, we move from the natural to the spiritual, spiritual, much as from solid to gas and science. And I'm not getting all spooky on you here because, you know, growing up in, in the church, we always hear, let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense. You see, the, the, the incense, which was the, the, the prayers of, of God's people, the saints, made it in to the presence of God, much like the incense. Uh, so so, so um, much like how uh, you, you have the process of sublimation, we move from the natural to the spiritual. For it is in this heaven that we also see the principalities and powers that do exist where unto our present time we remained locked in effectual struggle against the rulers, against the powers, against the, the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in this heavenly place. And of course, the very sacred third heaven where God lives and where he is seated on his throne. But at this most holy place, it is our traditional mindset that would think that only the divinely elect would be granted the splendor of God's gracious audience. And it would be so much easier for us to posit this interaction's placement be between God and Satan as in the second heaven. But to do that, we make error because Job's text is explicit in its detail that the sons of God, the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan 
also came among them. So, so are we missing a bigger message of the sovereignty of God? A God to whom all creation yields in ultimate submission? E e even though uh, loud the will of corruption, at least until final judgment and the lake of fire? After all, us, mankind, did surrender our dominion in Eden, and thus we handed over the keys to this world by our disobedience, which allowed Satan to become the god of this world, and which then would grant him access to the third heaven, until, at least, until the, the finished work of that Redeemer that Job so vibrantly prophesied about when he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the, the, the second scenario, to help us understand how Satan could have access to God's presence is one wherein we see this as the infinite extension of God's preveni prevenient grace, which goes well beyond our finite comprehension of grace that, that has been so badly handicapped by our self-righteous sense of judgment, with us making the assessment then of grace to this level being a superfluent, over-the-top grace. But, but then to advance that argument would be to also question the grace extended by Yeshua HaMasiah himself in allowing Judas's treacherous intent which Christ acknowledged before his final act of, of betrayal, to, to deem any extension of grace to such evil. Then, as superfluent, we must also lock together Divine Father with Divine Son in their parallel judgments, addressing the whole concept of Satan's access to God in this Job dialogue, then uh, dynamically verifies the truth that divine foreordination is not given as a manifestation of omnipotent manipulation, but it is truly an excellent demonstration of restraint as the plan for the redemption of mankind runs its full course for the sons and daughters to recapture their dominion. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> As this sovereignly destined plan unfolds with an ever compassionate God there to give aid to, to us, to us all that would call upon him, we take courage in knowing that long before this great drama of all humanity whatever debut into the theater of reality with, with its great acts of life, long before it all took place, perfection and justice existed before corruption and real love existed before hate. So this all brings us to our third possible scenario with regards to answering the complexing riddle as to how Satan would be granted access into God's presence, into heaven, as we ask the abstruse question, does the tragedy of this willfully fallen covering cherub now serve the purpose of the glorification process for man, with the adversity that comes from the adversary, being as the chisel of life to build our virtue and to develop our character. Hebrews 4.12 states, For the word of God is living and active and full of power. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, and of both joints and marrow, 
exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. He is an author, a well-connected Christian activist for positive change, and the founder and president of the Jewish Christian Network, reaching every continent in the world. Global Evangelistic Center invites you now to receive the worldwide expository and anointed teaching ministry of the senior pastor, Alexis Wallace. morning, a pleasant good morning to all of you out there, our worldwide guests, our worldwide viewers. Here we are coming from Kissimmee, Florida, Global Evangelistic Center, our home church here in our town, Kissimmee, Florida. Welcome to all of you. It is so nice to have you with us this morning, and I pray that you would enjoy this Broadcast. Amen. 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 Let's give them a wave. Let's give them a wave. Amen. Amen. Especially Amen. our GEC family. Yes, 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 yes. Good yes. morning to those of you who are joining us through our social media televised broadcast and, and to our listening audience via the radio. Mm -hmm. We are delighted to once again have joining us on this special broadcast, Minister Thurman Northern. Uh, who needs no introduction, <laughs> and uh, uh, our dear friend and sister, Evangelist Kelly Russell, two of our wonderful friends here, uh, 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 as we finish up our series today from Job, uh, as we deal with the issue of uh, theodicy, or some people say theodicy, I'd say theodicy, which basically seeks to answer the age-old question of why do bad things Happen to good people. Good people. Yes, people. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. After this series is certainly an on-time series, yes, yes. especially when we consider all that's going on in this nation and also around the world today. Yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. Amen. Minister Thurman, you are right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that because of this ongoing stress and tragic loss mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the pandemic of COVID-19, and the systemic abuse, mm -hmm. many people are asking the question as to why do bad things happen to good people? And this series is good for addressing that yeah. this morning. Amen. 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 I want to get right back into our message from last week. We ended at the point where his friends, I use the term, Loosely. <laughs> well, his friends. Because sometimes friends can come in an awful bad advice. And sometimes they can come in awful good. But anyway, his friends had just come from their various places of residence and had come to demonstrate their compassion at his great laws. Yes. Job was in a state where they uh, l l looked from a distance when they were coming. Mm -hmm. They did not even recognize him because of his disfigurement, but despite it all, yes. despite the loss, yes. joined Job to demonstrate their compassion at a point where Job's three friends My Lord. had heard of all of his adversity and loss, of all of his material possessions, and even more importantly, of his seven sons and three daughters. Mm -hmm. But despite all of that, here was Job, yes. realistically impacted by the horrific news, yes. but still not changed. Oh, hallelujah. From being a worshiper. From being a worshiper. Because sometimes, no matter what you go through, yes. the devil is out to yes. steal your praise. Yes. Amen. And he Amen. Let it go. Amen. Evangelist Kelly, please. Job chapter 1, yes. verses 20 to 22. And I will read from the Amplified Version. Amen. Yes. Yes. Verse 20 says, Then Job got up mm. and tore his robe oh my God. and shaved his head in the morning for the children. My Lord. Mm -hmm. And he fell to the ground and worshipped God. Oh, hallelujah. He said, 
naked without possessions. Hmm. I came into this world from my mother's womb, and naked I will return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Through all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. You know, we were just talking about that. You know, there's, there's a popular, it's so popular in the Christian world where when we requote that particular part that says, the Lord gives and the Lord, Lord take it take away. It away. Amen. And as you were saying, that wasn't the Lord that took it away. <laughs> that was Job speaking. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Of, of not really knowing what was going on. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. We know from the scripture that it was Satan that was doing all of that damage to Job. Amen. Yes, it wasn't Amen. The Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. Let's go into the Job dialogue, so oh to God. speak. We're going to focus uh, <laughs> critical and prophetic analysis on Eliphaz. Eliphaz. Mm, Eliphaz. Uh, Job's friend. As we take an analytical overview of the book and life of Job and, and the, the key issues raised from the council of, council of his friends, I believe that there will be a powerful and very encouraging message that will emerge. Yes. Uh, a, a timeless message of yes. great relevancy to our present time that will speak prophetic wisdom and comfort in our stressful times. Yeah. There are so many profound questions that arise from the ageless dialogue and drama of Job yes. that can truly only be answered by the Redeemer that Job expresses yes. such strong confidence yes. in. Yes. Say, I know yes. that my Redeemer lives. Yes. 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 So only Christ yes. can bring that which is pure mm -hmm. from the impure. Yes. But, but, but just as, as for many, the revelation of the universality of the gospel, even unto the Arabic people, there are also a variety of other profound issues mm -hmm. that arise from the drama of Job's life and dialogue, and at least three key concepts, yes. uh, which we will address through the friends that came to bring counsel. The first one of which to speak was Eliphaz. Eliphaz. The, the, the key things that arise from Eliphaz's dialogue being mysticism. Yes. Mysticism. Yes. Now, Pastor Evelyn, you take Eliphaz, uh, and the applicable scripture that draws uh, this point out is Job chapter 4. Verses 12 to 16. Job chapter 4, 12 to 16. Okay. Job chapter 4, 12 to 16. I'm reading from the Amplified Amen. Bible. Amen. It Amen. says, Now a word was secretly brought to me, mm. and my ear received a whisper of it amid disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night mm. when deep sleep falls on men. Dread and trembling came upon me, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of on my skin stood on end. The spirit stood still, but I could not discern it in appearance. A form was before my Pastor Alexis, <clears throat> you have brought it to our knowledge and attention a few programs back. Mm. I don't know if you remember that mm. Eliphaz yes. was a descendant of, of Shua. Shua. Yes, yes. yes. Eliphaz the Temanite <laughs> was a descendant mm. of Teman. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was the grandson, you said, of Esau. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, One yes, of yes, the dukes yes. of Edom. 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 Edom was an ancient kingdom of the trans Jordan. Jordan. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so profound, especially Pastor, for the time we're in. But Pastor Alexis, mm -hmm. you also brought out the trans Jordan mm -hmm. 
is the part of the southern Levant. Levant. Mm -hmm. East of the Jordan River, yes, yes. mostly contained in present day Jordan. Yes. That's what we call Jordan today. That's absolutely. <laughs> <it. laughs> My God. So, so, so with this revelation uh -huh. regarding the universality of the gospel unto the Arabic people, mm -hmm. uh, unto the Arabic world, we, we see that in our modern time, mm -hmm. Jordan was the, the second Arab country yes. after Egypt to sign a peace accord with Israel, mm. uh, which was signed in uh, it was signed on 26th of October 1994 between Jordan's King Hussein and Israeli Prime Minister, back then it was Yitzhak Rabin, mm -hmm. in a truly historic deal brokered by uh, then U.S. President Bill Clinton. Oh. <laughs> well, we also see that intelligence reports reveal that Jordan is considered a very strategic country. Mm. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. only from a strategic location, mm -hmm. but the crossroads of what uh, Christian Jews and Muslims call the Holy Land. Yes. Right, yes. Right, right. It is very strategic. Yes. Yes. Especially yes. with the major Abrahamic initiative mm -hmm. that I have undertaken. It is strategic in its potential mm -hmm. to uh, because it is a major tourist destination, mm -hmm. also attracting medical tourism yes. due to its yes. uh, well-developed health sector. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> My God, Pastor Alexis, that's what makes me so excited mm -hmm. about your book Amen. on the Abraham wow. Initiative, Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, which, yes. as you have repeatedly said, is more than just a book. Yes. It's a mission. It's a mission. Amen. Yes. Amen. And one that will have powerful significance to the Middle East and Amen. to the whole mm. world. Mm. Mm. How long until it comes mm. up, Pastor? Evangelist. <laughs> I am also excited about it. And everything now is in the hands of TBN. Mm. Everything is in their hands who are doing an excellent job with carefully editing it, and when it hits the market, <laughs> as it soon will, That's uh, right. they are strategically promising for it to be available worldwide. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That is awesome. Amen. 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 I'm excited about it. Amen. 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 I am too. excited also mm -hmm. yes. because I have seen firsthand mm -hmm. the research, okay. the prayer, and the work that you have put into that into mm. that book. Yeah. I've seen it myself. I've seen the sleepless nights. Right. What they say, oh. the burning of the midnight oil. Amen. 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 Yeah. I have seen it. Yeah. So it is truly, truly a prophetic work. And on that note, Pastor Alexis, <laughs> as we started to focus on the prophetic significance of Eliphaz's message to our current time, I personally think you mentioned that it was mystical. <laughs> mysticism. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Yes. Mysticism. Mysticism. Yes. Mysticism. Let me yes. show yes. you yes. 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 how we come to that conclusion mm. and its current relevance. As you see from the scripture, that you read Eliphaz says that a word was secretly brought to him. Mm and his ear received a whisper of it yes. amid disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night yes. where what deep sleep falls on men, men. yes 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 <laughs> master and he said that dread mm. and trembling right. came upon him yes which made all his bones shake My God. can you imagine your bones <laughs> shaking fright that's, that's, that's right. Right. fright yes <laughs> then a spirit passed My before God. his face which <laughs> made the hair on his skin stand on, on end. end. You know when sometimes things happen to us yes. when you are so excited they yes. say the hair on your arm. Yeah, yeah, the the hair hair with, yes, yes, yes. He said the hair on his skin stand My God. end. My God. My God. Now, 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 now the key to the label of mystic and mysticism that I have affixed here mm -hmm. is what he says afterwards. <laughs> Minister Thurman and Evangelist Kelly, can you guys read uh that for me, please. It's, it's Job chapter 4, uh, Minister Thurman, 16 to 17, and Evangelist 17 to 19. 
The spirit stood still, but mm. I could not discern its appearance. Mm. Before what before my eyes, mm. there was silence, and then I heard a voice saying, He heard a voice saying, Yes. Can mortal man mm. be just before God or mm. be more righteous than he? My God. Can a man be pure before his master, before mm. his maker, rather, mm. or be more clean than he? Mm. And verse 18 says, God puts no trust mm. or confidence. Mm even in his heavenly servants. My Lord. And he charges his angels with error. Mm. How much more will he blame and charge those who dwell in the house, the bodies of clay, mm. whose foundations are in the dust, who are crushed like a moth? My Lord. Now, now remember, this is what um, he is hearing. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Pastor Evelyn, can, can you read the definition of what a mystic is, please? <laughs> Pastor, yes. mysticism hmm. is not an easy word to describe, hmm. but from different sources we see that it has there two, not one, but two, two definitions, definitions. Mm -hmm. yes. of what mysticism is. All right. The first one being a more technical mm. definition that is the experience of mystical union mm. of direct communion with ultimate reality reported by mystics. Mm. My God. My God. Mm. The, what they call the Merriam-Webster Dictionary yeah. says, further breaks it down. Mm. More or more simplified, it defines it as the belief that direct knowledge of God, spiritual truth, or ultimate reality can be attained through sub subjective, subjective experience, such as intuition or your insight. Oh my God. You also mentioned a second. Definition. Yes. <laughs> yes. That definition comes from the Oxford Dictionary. Okay. Believed characterized by self delusion. Mm. You know, so many people <laughs> have delusion. So many people are hallucinating day by day. But yes. it's by self delusion or dreamy confusion of thoughts, oh especially when based on the assumption of occult qualities or mysterious agencies. So pastor, yes. Mm. From the definition of mysticism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have gathered that mysticism can be thought of as a practice mm. of tangibility experiencing God. Mm. Yes, yes. I like how you put that. The practice of tangibly experiencing God. The, theolog the theologians, they call it the practice of experiential knowledge mm -hmm. of God. But, but uh, you put it in an even better way. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lentz. Thank you so much for breaking that down. <laughs> yes, 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 I like yes, that. Yes, yes. Yes. Pastor Alexis, the second definition mm. of Mysticism, mysticism mm -hmm. is one that deals with self-delusion. My God. Remember I explained yes. that earlier? Mm -hmm. Or dreamy confusion of thoughts when based on the assumption of occult yeah. qualities or mysterious agencies. Yes. That, that, uh, that, you need to that's, explain that's that a, a little one. deeper. That's Amen. a dangerous Amen. one. Amen. Because there are a lot of people out there yes. um, that are self, uh, they are in a state of self-delusion. Um, and they bring these, this um, scary type stuff, this spooky yeah. type of stuff yes, yes. that they call knowledge to the fore. Um, uh -huh. and, and, and you've got to be careful of them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, if I always say, if you can't show it to me in the Bible, mm -hmm. then um, God ain't saying it. That's <laughs> but, 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 but exactly what you said, uh, Pastor Bill. Now, now Bildad mm -hmm. is characterized for mysticism. Because it was in the, the visions of the night right. when dread and trembling came upon him 
and the spirit that he mis mystically encountered being the source of knowledge you got to be careful yeah. from which he pulled to bring forth a word unto Job. <laughs> but doesn't our own Christian experience have a certain degree of mysticism involved in the pastor? Mm. It certainly Good does. Question. It yes. certainly does, but it's a term. And that's what makes it a two-edged word. Because whether we are charismatic Christians that believe in being filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit yes. or whether we are traditional yes. Christians yes. that celebrate the ministry of Eucharist, Mysticism is an actual part of our belief. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yes, amen. But of course, you will immediately see, you'll immediately see that with the mysticism that has the occult qualities of, or mysterious agencies connected with it, this is definitely a no-no. I didn't plan on sharing this with you, but I'll tell you a little story. When I first got saved, mm -hmm. before I got saved, I used to go to a lady that was an actual soothsayer because this lady was quite accurate in her ability to cut the deck of cards. Then I got saved. I got saved at Oral Roberts University. And I started to read the Bible and I became knowledgeable about things that we should and should not do. And I went with a friend who shall remain nameless. And I was outside. We went to let this lady cut the deck for us, so to speak. And I was outside of her home, and I said to God, I said, God, show me a sign if um, it's right for me to seek uh, this lady's art. And um, when I went in, she cut the deck for my friend, and she went to cut the deck for me. And she said, I cannot cut this deck for you because your future is not in this deck, it's in God's hands. My God, my Lord. And um, then I realized that God had manifested himself because these two sayers, they can take their $30. That's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Couldn't take you. If you used to take my money, then I got a boldness over me and I said, so how did your powers come to you? She said, in the night. I said, okay. Uh, and she had a picture of the Virgin Mary on the wall. She's, you know, the religious man. Mm -hmm. And I said, I see that you have a picture of, of, of the Virgin Mother. She said, the Virgin Mary is blessed. <laughs> and, you know, she asked me to pray for her. My God. She told me, I have circulation problems in my legs and I'll know when you pray for me. I went back never again in my life to this from then way back then to this day and going forward never again yeah. mm -hmm. do I look to astrology I know. do I look to soothsayers because what does she say your future is it's not in, in my yes. deck That's it's right. in God That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. she yeah. told me she could see she That's said right. you sit among the white hearts my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when I went into that chapel to pray for that woman um God told me, get up off your knees. You cannot pray for her until she comes out of what she is in. Yes. <laughs> I just feel, felt led to, to share, share that. Share that. Amen. Amen. We, Amen. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. we go to them thinking they have the power. We have the power. Yes. We are the future is in God's hands. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Exactly. Yes. There's a curse that's associated right. with it that needs to be broken yes. if you have indulged in it. Yes. <laughs> you see, with mysticism that has the occult qualities of mysterious agencies yes. connected with it, that is definitely a no, no. no. Yes. Yes. We have to be careful because there's also a major danger though, yes. especially yes. relevant now in our present time, mm -hmm. even to those of us that are not into the occultic side of mysticism. Yes. Because we are in a season when too many Christians are far too moved by sensation. Sensation, yes. Sensation. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
Hmm. Pastor, this is not good. No, no, it's not. Because now with COVID-19 mm. causing most churches to evolve mm. for this season and even longer. I believe so. <laughs> into being virtual, mm -hmm. these types sensations-driven people mm -hmm. will really feel it. Yes, they will. Yes, they yes, will yes, really yes, feel yes. it. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these Christians <laughs> that have allowed themselves to become so so dependent mm. on getting emotional highs mm. Mm. from the physical gatherings mm. forgot that the church is the right, body now. of Christ yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. and yes. not the physical building. Right. Amen. 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 It's not the physical building. Yes. Amen. Yes. We, are we are the body of yes. Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. We are the church. Come on now. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you see, when you allow yourself to become so dependent mm -hmm on getting emotional highs from, from the physical gatherings and, and seeing the miraculous, you can easily develop an almost unquenchable yes. thirst yes. that can drive you into being very much like uh, what can be described as a carnival gypsy. Yes. Rushing yes. to and fro yes. for miracle yes. shows. Yes. My God. Yes, yes, uh, Pastor yes. Bob was very clear and warned about these type of things mm. happening in the end times. Mm -hmm. mm. it, it certainly is. It's in Second Timothy chapter four, verses three to four. Minister Thurman, please read that for us. Right, sure. I'm reading from the Amplified version. Mm -hmm. It says in verse number three, "For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. accurate instruction that judges them." God's truth, mm -hmm. but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, yes. chosen to satisfy their own desires mm -hmm. and to support the errors they hold, mm -hmm. and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions, I'm sorry, fictions, and will accept the unacceptable. Right. Yes, 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 yes. And now they have found themselves in a spiritual place where they feel like they cannot feel God. Mm -hmm. They call it being in the desert, spiritual right. desert. <laughs> like they feel like they cannot feel God like they used to mm -hmm. because they did not fully grasp the reality that the Bible is not only God's unadulterated word, but it is God's greatest. Yes. and most reliable yes. revelation of himself to, to mankind. mankind. Yes. You see, it's, it's right. not that the experiential revelation of God is not awesome, because it is. But it should never replace the verification of the word. Yes. Yes. Because anything God has to say yes. is already in the word yes. of God. Yes. yes, Pastor Alexis, you said that with Build a strong point, mm. which is mysticism, mm. that we would transfer kingdom wisdom to practical everyday knowledge addressing our current events and challenges. Yes, Pastor Evelina. There is a powerful parallel with mm. Bildad's mysticism. Mm -hmm. Yes, the theologians call it the practice of the experiential knowledge of God. But you put it, uh, Minister Evangelist Kelly, in a much better way. Uh, uh, amen to what you just read, Mr. Thurman. <laughs> As we focus on mysticism, uh, we see that it is of prophetic relevance uh, of all to all of us as we transfer kingdom wisdom to practical everyday knowledge, yes. addressing our current events and challenges. The warnings that come to us from mysticism is the foundation for the significance of the message that comes to us regarding the greater need for discernment. Mm -hmm. discernment yes. and I'm gonna come to you now with a word when the same misdemeanor crime causes death for some but for another set of people brings them just a warning we must question discernment or when a mischievous infraction causes expulsion for one student, but just laughter or a pet talk for the other, then it's time for us to really question 
the power and psychological construct of those to whom discretion is an entitlement of office. Prejudice. Prejudice is a hurtful word for, for, for both the one that experiences it and to, to most people upon whom the label rests. In technically defining prejudice, we see that it is judgment based on factors inherent in the person making the judgment before the new opportunity or person presents themselves in a position for our judgment. Now, that definition should help us see how important our pre-existing mindsets are. You see, basic common sense will tell us that diversity in leadership and in our seats of power provides one of the greatest safeguards for eradicating bias with discretion. As we then have people with differing experiences and, and different sympathies. But there is also another side to discretion that most people miss, perhaps being oblivious to history or being ignorant to the deeper realm of spirituality uh, that so powerfully exists as other realm. Just beyond the happy domain of rudimentary Christianity, and this is the realm of spirituality, where the principalities and powers exist. We mentioned that at the beginning of this program. Within this domain, mysticism has always clouded discernment. <clears throat> now, when we get to the, to the roots of racist doctrine that most people remain oblivious to, it's hard not to see the occultic embrace of the Hitler-era Nazis with, with this truth becoming even more evident as we witness the demonic fruits of their actions with the atrocities that, that lay bare on history's pages. And of course, we cannot dismiss the orchestration of the principalities in these actions. But in just labeling it as demonic, we miss the link forged between discernment and mysticism, a link forged by doctrine and perspective. We, we, we can get lost in the intentionality uh, uh, of, of people that intentionally mis, uh, give us misleading concepts of, of things like unity through nobility uh, until we realize that uh, <laughs> just what they're talking about, until we realize just how nobility is defined and how any doctrine that teaches inequality or racial superiority is not from the God of the Bible. You see, believe it or not, as much as we clamor for, for better discretion to be used by those in authority and by our law enforcement, we have to be careful in what we call for because discretion is a word of dual significance. As we see, its definition means to behave or speak in such a way to avoid offense. But, but, but it can also mean being discreet and somewhat secretive. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11 tells us that discretion will watch over us, but understanding and discernment will guard us. Over 600 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah stood on the banks of time and destiny, prophesying unto the children of Abraham, both Isaac and Ishmael. He prophesied the message that reverberates unto our present age, prophesying that the Eastern trading tribes at an appointed time would come to the comprehensive reality of the glory and brilliance of the Lord. That time is now. The Abrahamic initiative 
by Pastor Alexis Wallace is a powerful book and project chronicling what many believe to be one of the greatest end time moves of God. Each chapter is a strategic part of the biblically based mosaic design to give its readers a rich source of information and empowerment for the end times. This book is a prophetically profound and timely work that will change the life of its readers. Because it's much more than just a great read, it's a mission. Take a walk through the biblical genesis of healing to uncover God's universal model of healing that will enable you to walk in divine health. The Abrahamic Initiative book revisits the Ninevite Commission, identifying the age-old Babylonian influence over religion as it challenges the reader to live a spiritually pure, pagan-free life. Pastor Alexis Wallace takes a bold approach in addressing key areas essential to bridging the gap between the three Abrahamic faiths and to bring God's blessing, healing, and deliverance with provocative current headline topics. In an alarming time of increased anti-Semitism and racial and religious hatred, the Abrahamic Initiative takes an unprecedented look into the spiritual dynamic of it, enabling you to better fully understand it as you empowered to address anti-Semitism and racism from a victoriously higher plane of spiritual warfare. The book revisits the road to Damascus as a road of revelation to our present time, unveiling an age-old triad of demonically inspired forces creating a stronghold for zealous and marginalized jihadists. The book's conclusion goes back to the beginning as Pastor Alexis reveals God's universal plan for prosperity encoded within the Garden of Eden. In it, he predicts a coming global economic shift in the Middle East that will call for the manifestation of a blessed and anointed royal priesthood to emerge in these end times. Our budget to take this initiative worldwide is $25,000 and our ministry is requesting your prayers and support to stand with us as we produce our first book for the initiative. We are requesting your prayers and financial support as we produce the Abrahamic Initiative book for this timely, bridge-building, divinely mandated work. It is a work being strategically built with the purpose of building bridges of understanding, friendship and cooperation between the Abrahamic faiths and glorifying God while bettering the plight of mankind. Thank you for joining us for this teaching ministry of Pastor Alexis Wallace. It is a production of Global Evangelistic Center and Time 7 Media. Tune in again next week for another exciting edition of this program via this network. Please stand with us with your love gifts, and if you're a member or partner of Global Evangelistic Center, we need and encourage your support as we continue to produce this spiritually enlightening and empowering program. Don't forget, tune in again next week, same time and same channel, for the powerful teaching ministry of Pastor Alexis Wallace. But until the next time, may the joy of the Lord be your strength. If you'd like to contact us, you can write us at P.O. Box 420297, Kissimmee, Florida 34742. Or you can visit our website at www.gecvirtual.org. To give online, please see the link below. Or you can give us a call at 407-530-7624.